My name is Jacqueline Akenpalu. I'm retired from the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory. Before joining APL, I worked for 25 years for Bell Laboratories and then AT&T Laboratories. Well, I always loved math from my earliest days in school. Manipulating numbers and understanding the relationships between them was just something that seemed to come natural to me. So when I was growing up, the only people that I knew who had careers related to mathematics were my math teachers. So originally, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to teach math. Uh, in high school, I think I first began to realize that there were other jobs that people could do with backgrounds in mathematics. So I went to uh, undergraduate school at Duke University, and there I had a professor uh, who had a connection to Johns Hopkins University. So upon deciding that I wanted to pursue my PhD degree after graduating, uh, he encouraged me to apply to Johns Hopkins to their uh, mathematical sciences program. And I was accepted into their PhD program. Now that was a great opportunity for me and a real eye opener in terms of the, the very uh, very disciplines, especially applied disciplines associated with mathematics. Um, I chose a PhD advisor there, Dr. Elisa Nador, who had connections to industry, and he was instrumental in my getting two summer jobs, one at the General Motors Research Labs in Michigan and one at Bell Laboratories in New Jersey. And again, those were just... Um, instrumental experiences in terms of exposing me to the, the kinds of uh, things, especially applied areas that one could work in as a mathematician. Well, mathematics is a powerful tool for modeling all kinds of problems in the world and making predictions about how systems work. So you know, my career has been one of in industry. As I said before, I worked for Bell Labs and AT&T Labs, and then the Applied Physics Laboratory. So over my career, I've worked on many different kinds of problems. And so I've had to apply many different kinds of mathematics. So I've used um, algebra, I've used um, operations research, uh, probability and statistics, uh, forecasting, simulation, so uh, lots of different kinds of math. So one of the th implications of that was that I've had to continually learn new math over my career, right? Uh, uh, appropriate to the problem that I was working on. Um, in terms of uh, the, the kinds of math I most enjoy, I really enjoy building stochastic models. So stochastic models are models that take into account uncertainty in the problem that you are uh, modeling. So for example, if you're modeling the phone network, a problem I worked on at um, Bell Laboratories, and you're trying to understand its performance, uh, obviously you don't know exactly what calls are gonna happen on the network. And so you can't uh, precisely say what will happen but you can use um, stochastic modeling techniques, probability and statistics to characterize and predict uh, qualitatively what's going to happen on the network. So those are the kinds of models I particularly enjoy building. Probably my, what, what I would characterize as my first significant difficulty was in graduate school, when now I was expected to produce some original mathematics. It took me a while to kind of settle down and figure out uh, what my dissertation would uh, be on. Uh, I was very fortunate in my choice of advisors, Dr. Nador. He was very instrumental in helping me uh, focus on an area. Eventually, I decided on a problem in inventory systems. Um, in terms of you know working in industry. Again, I would say, um, you know, you go from graduate school and then you go into industry where now people are expecting you to solve, 
you know, real problems. And there's not a whole lot of guidance necessarily about how to approach it. And you know what the problem is, but there's no, you know, there's no textbook that says, here's how you approach the problem. So even the, the first problem that I worked on at Bell Laboratories when I needed to, to model a new routing strategy for their network, it was like, okay, we need you to understand how this is going to perform. And so it's like you you sit down with a blank piece of paper and it's like, where do I begin? And you know, fortunately, um, I had, again, good uh, mentors in that environment. And I also had the luxury of time to sort of, you know, uh, try some things, experiment, try some other things. And eventually that turned out to be um, a really uh, positive experience for me. But again, uh, at the beginning, you know, there was some struggle involved and, you know, how do I get, how do I get started? I really still think very fondly on the first project I worked on at Bell Laboratories. So when I joined Bell Laboratories, they were in the process of changing the way that they engineer the network. And that means you know, changing the, um, the algorithms for deciding how much capacity to put in the network in order to handle telephone calls. And the changes that they were gonna make were going to save the company a lot of money, but they, but they also had the potential for uh, degrading customer service in certain situations. So my job was to look at the new routing strategy that they were going to use to understand how it was gonna to perform to uh, anticipate any problems it was going to produce, and then to recommend strategies for dealing with those problems. So um, again, this is a high stakes pro project for the company because they were going to uh, save tremendous amounts of money, uh, but they could not do that at the risk of jeopardizing customer service. So um, I was able to, with my uh, modeling techniques, to uh, demonstrate certain instabilities in this new routing strategy, and also to be able to um, recommend ways to overcome that so that the performance of the network would be, uh, be maintained at a high level. The, uh, in addition though to um, you know, learning how to take a problem like that and analyze it and make that kind of valuable contribution, it was also an opportunity for me to learn how to communicate my mathematical results to a broad audience. So, you know, out of that, I created this uh, paper, which I am still tremendously proud of in terms of um, the way I was able to, you know, document my results um, for others to understand. Uh, so again, I'm very proud of that work. And in fact, you know, the, the results from that project are still in use in the AT&T network today. So even though it was very early in my career, you know, it still stands out to, uh, for me as one of my, uh, my proudest experiences. Actually, the person that I decided to highlight as a, a role model was actually my grandmother. So not someone directly related to my career per se, but um, this was a woman who, um, you know, early in her life worked in the tobacco fields of uh, North Carolina, uh, you know, never got past um, an elementary school education, worked very hard raising eight children, um, but she uh, had a yearning to learn. And in fact, when she was in her 60s, uh, she went back to evening school to try to get her high school uh, equivalency degree. Um, and I remember, you know, helping her with her math, which she struggled with so much. I mean, she had so much trouble with fractions. <laughs> uh, but I had just such respect for her for, you know, despite the circumstances of her life, uh, just putting such a premium on learning and wanting to learn, you know, at a, even at a point in her life where you say, 
you know, why does she even need to know these things? She just wanted to know, right? And it just gave me uh, such an increased appreciation for the opportunities that I had, you know, to, uh, to go to institutions like Duke University and then Johns Hopkins University. So I, so I really, I think of her first. In terms of a supporting person, again, I just, I have to go back and highlight my PhD advisor, Dr. Nador. He was just so instrumental in guiding me. I mean, I went to graduate school because I just liked school, but I really had very little concept of what it meant to do a dissertation. And so he was just so instrumental in helping me through that entire process, picking a, a topic and then, you know, successfully completing it. So uh, he's, again, I remember him as just one of the, you know, strongest people in my support network. So careers in mathematics um, provide the opportunity to make such a positive difference in the world. I mean, there are so many different problems in the world that lend themselves to analysis by mathematics. And I just encourage anyone who has a, um, a yearning to do mathematics to you know, take the time to learn about the various opportunities for applying mathematics. So, you know, talk to mathematicians. Obviously, they should uh, take advantage of the many wonderful videos you guys are putting together. But you know, you know, really take the time to get a sense of the breadth of the possibilities uh, of mathematics. Uh, reach out to other mathematicians. Uh, I can tell you firsthand they will be delighted to talk to you and help you because they are uh, very um, earnest to make sure that there are others that are following in their footsteps. Um, you know, build a network of people that can support you. Um, hopefully I've conveyed how important it was, you know, both in graduate school and beyond to have people that were supporting me as I went through my career. Uh, you can never have too many people in your network. So take the time to reach out to others.